this is a very general overview of what medical students go through in their fourth year in order to become a resident. My name is Eric Mobbin and I'm currently a fourth year medical student and I just matched two days ago into OBGYN. If your friends and family are anything like mine, then I'm sure you've gotten a thousand questions about like, where are you going to move for residency? What are you going to do after graduation? Um, like, where are you going to get your next step in training? Most people literally have no idea what the match is and it's very confusing. So I wanted to make this video for med students to send to their families and friends after they have been tired explaining what the whole match process is really briefly. Usually the first two years of medical school are didactic, which means in the classroom, kind of like college, but like much faster than college and uh, a lot more information than college. And I know a lot of med schools are moving away from two full years in didactics and are moving more towards like maybe one or one and a half years of didactics and moving on to clinical rotations earlier. So most of your friends and family who are in med school right now are probably doing somewhere between one and two years of classroom work. After that, there is a full year of rotations and rotations differ from school to school, but there are typically overlapping core rotations and I'm sure there are some sort of requirements by the LCME, but med students in their third year or maybe a little bit earlier will rotate through OBJN, pediatrics, internal medicine, neurology, sometimes emergency medicine, surgery, psychiatry, family medicine, I think I hit them all. That's when students are actually in a hospital and seeing their patients. You want to feel like you're responsible for a patient. As a med student, you want to know all their labs, you want to know all their history, everything about your patients that you can. And you want to make sure that when you see a patient on rounds, like you're the person that's recognized and that you should be the person that they see the most really uh, as a medical student. But um, attendings, residents, like there are a lot of other people who oversee your work. And there are a lot of things that we as medical students cannot do. We can't sign orders. We can't sign medications. Oftentimes we can put them in. So for instance, if I know someone needs like a high blood pressure medication like lisinopril, I can put that in their orders, but I can't sign it. I just put it penned and then often an attending or a resident will look at it, see that it makes sense and that it's for the correct patient and then sign it themselves. So as a med student, you're taking on some responsibility, but everything you do is overseen by a actual licensed physician. Okay. So anyways, again, that was a really, really quick recap of what the first few years of med school look like. And there's a lot more detail I could jump into, but I want to move on to what it really takes and what the process is for actually getting a job or like the second part of training, which is residency. Um, so residency can differ in the amount of years. The shortest amount of training is three years, and that would include um, specialties like family medicine and most emergency medicine uh, programs, although some do four years now. Um, there are a few others I believe that also are three years. And then it can be as long as seven or eight years, depending on some of the longer ones include neurosurgery and plastic surgery. Um, and then there are some that are in the middle. Like for me, I'm going to OBGYN, so that's four years of training. Um, but basically, uh, what you should know about the process that your loved one is going through is that it's a long, expensive road. And I did make another video about my expenses and how much I spent during my fourth year, and I'll link that below. But just so you understand how financially stressful this time is and how just like stressful in general it is feeling constantly judged on these interviews during your fourth year. So fourth year, typically your med student will be rotating often in different hospitals for the first few months, be going to hospitals that they would like to eventually match to um, or work at or train at during residency or um, just places where there's family around. So it's cheaper to rotate at these places in the hopes of getting a good letter of recommendation. There are many different reasons why people choose to do a ways in a certain hospital or location. And those are just a couple of them. But often med students will do anywhere between 
zero if their specialty doesn't require them or they're not as necessary and upwards of four. Um, I know at my school there's a maximum of 16 weeks that a student can do away during their fourth year and only 12 of those credits will even count towards their graduation. It varies for different people. For instance, I did aways during July, September, and January. So super spread out. Some people will do them June, July, August and get them all done. It just depends kind of like what worked out for them in terms of planning and scheduling and everything. On top of aways, every single fourth year medical student will have access to start applying to residency in June. So let's start filling out their, their applications and making sure that everything is good to go. They can submit their applications in the middle of September. And so they pick residencies just based on what they read online, what they hear from their mentors and alumni, and just kind of their gut feelings about maybe where they wanna live or what a program has to offer. And just based on that information, you decide what programs to apply to. And often that can be anywhere between like 20, especially if you are very competitive in a less competitive field and all the way up to a hundred or more if you are going to a competitive specialty or your couples matching. After that, it's kind of this waiting game where you're just waiting for emails to come trickling in um, with offers for invitations to interview at these programs. That typically happens between the span of sometimes as early as September all the way through November. We accept interviews or decline them based on what we want and then we schedule interviews. These scheduled interviews can happen whenever a program wants. Sometimes programs will list these interview dates on their website and sometimes they won't. It makes it very stressful and difficult to try to plan your schedule when you have no idea of when potentially you'll even have the opportunity to interview. Interviews usually happen from anywhere as early as October through often through February. They have to finish in February because that's when our rank order lists are due. So a rank order list is essentially when applicants make a list of their favorite programs starting from like one is their absolute favorite and then all the way down to their least favorite. Applicants are encouraged not to rank programs they cannot see themselves being at. So for instance, if you interview at a program and you say, I would rather not match, then match of this program, then that's a reason to not include that program on their list. Programs do the same thing. They make their list of favorite applicants to least favorite applicants. And then there is a Nobel Prize winning algorithm that uses all of this data in order to match each applicant to one program. When you submit your rank order list, that is a legally binding action. That means that you will go to residency wherever the match algorithm places you. Of course, you have choice because you're only ranking the programs that you see yourself at and that you think you would enjoy training at and you would be satisfied at. Um, but at the same time, you you know, it depends on what other applicants want, what the programs want. So you do have some choice, but at the end of the day, you only get that one program and you go there. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. Um, and that's why this whole process is so crazy. So that happens in February where everyone submits their list. And then in March is match month. So the third Monday in March is when applicants will receive a match status email. So at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, an email comes through every single graduating medical student's inbox, an email that says, you know, if you matched or not. Unfortunately, it does not say where you matched. And you have to wait another four days to figure that out. And the reason that there's this time is because for those individuals who don't match on Monday, they have that full week to go throughout the SOAP process. And I'll link below kind of some information about the SOAP process that medical students read and that's kind of the schedule that they have to adhere to and they have to go through that program. But essentially, people who don't match receive a list of the programs that have spots that are not filled and they can apply for these spots. The only problem is that Sometimes there aren't spots in the specialty that they once wanted to pursue. Like plastic surgery, often there are no unfilled spots. So if someone who applied into plastic surgery does not match and has to soap, they usually have to pursue something else like general surgery or a prelim general surgery or, um, or sometimes we'll even switch to something totally different like radiology, family medicine, etc. So um, it's really, really, really disheartening um, for someone to have received that email on a Monday not having matched. And I honestly have no idea how that feels and I can't even imagine how much that must hurt and you know, 
my heart goes out to people who've had to suffer that kind of heartbreak because I cannot imagine it must be easy. So for family and friends, um, you know, it's important to know that this is a really devastating moment for a lot of people. And so if you are someone's support system, if you are someone's, um, you know, person, then it's a really, you know, important time in their lives to have that support and to feel like they're loved and to realize that they matter so much more than what this match system says about them. On Friday, for those who match and for those who are able to soap into those available positions, they will find out where they will be spending the rest of their training years as a resident um, on Friday. Match day is done really differently at every school. Um, at our program, typically what happens is there's a huge party. It's a surprise theme. Last year it was like Alice in Wonderland and everyone's match school were in a clock so you know like instead of just like a plain white envelope it kind of matches the theme one year they did Willy Wonka and had chocolate bars with golden tickets that had their hospital on it one year they did Star Wars and they had these really cool lightsabers that had their program listed on it so they try to make it really fun and themed and surprising every year Unfortunately, um, I'm recording this in 2020 and the coronavirus has canceled everything. So our match day celebration has also been canceled. Um, I do have plans for an alternative celebration. So that third Friday of March is when we find out where. And again, this is another opportunity to support your friend or family member that's in med school because this is quite literally the most important day of their medical school career. So it's a really exciting day, but it can also be really devastating for others, for those, again, who haven't matched or for those who match lower on their rank list um, can be disappointed. So I think it's just a really big roller coaster of emotion. And um, I'm speaking on Wednesday before match day, so I know that I've matched, but I don't know where. So who knows? I mean, it could be like the best day of my life. It could be one of the more disappointing times of my life i don't really know honestly i think there's gonna be a lot of emotion and again i'm making a video on what that whole experience will be like for myself but i hope this answered some of the questions for families and friends of med students who are going through this process so that you understand a little bit more about how applying and matching to residency works i will also be linking down below the videos that the nrmp or the matching program basically has created for med students to understand how the algorithm works and maybe that can shed more light for you as well to understand kind of the process that your med student has to go through so i hope that you enjoyed this video i hope it was helpful for friends and family and other support systems of med students who are going through this process who want to understand it more and who want to know when and where they should be available to support their student. So if you like this video and you thought it was helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel because I'll be uploading new videos all about life of a medical student and soon to be resident.